Hey everyone, it's Daniel Brother Barbaris. This next video is going to be on the offline media. This will allow you to create an ISO file that you can burn to either a DVD or onto a USB thumb drive. What we're going to do is we're going to create a new media folder. We're going to create a selection profile for what we want to place onto the USB stick or ISO and then we're going to show you how to set up the offline media rules as well as the bootstrap INI. Now remember this is going to be for your lab or for your network. Okay, This is not an offline work group centric uh, installation. You'll notice that when we set up our deployment um, share that all of our stuff was on a network share. Now if you wanted to create a fully offline work group centric installation, I would suggest in your deployment share that you create localized folders for your applications. Also go through your scripts and make sure that they aren't pointed to network locations, but to folders that will be in your deployment share. Okay, so that's our one caveat. Um, I'll go through and we'll start right away. So first things first, let's create our folder. So we're going to go down to start, open up our terminal, right click, go to PowerShell, and we'll copy from 4 and 5, paste. See, it created our directory. We're good there. We can actually check on that. Go here. Here's our media, media-domain folder. And we're good there. So start. Go Open up Deployment Workbench. Give that a moment. We're going to expand the Deployment Shares. We're going to go down to our uh, Advanced Configuration. We're going to right-click on Selection Profiles, New Selection Profile. And I'm going to call this media-domain. Okay, click Next. Now what you can do is if you only imported drivers for your particular models uh, as you followed along, you can click DS001 to select everything. But as I did all of them, I'm going to show you what I'm going to do. So I'm going to select all of our applications, all of our operating systems, but I'm going to expand out-of-box drivers, expand WinPE. I'm only going to select my HP WinPE drivers and my HP drivers for our, my particular models. So just select what you uh, want there. I'm going to click Packages and then Task Sequences. Okay, next, next. There we go, Finish. Okay, and now we're here. We're going to go to Media under Advanced Configuration. We're going to right click new media. Okay. Our media path is that folder we just created. So we're going to copy that or you can browse to it. In our selection profile, we just created that media dash domain selection profile. Click on that. Next. Next. Give that a few moments. It'll create our deployment share. I'll show you that. So if you go here to file share, media, media domain, content, deploy and you'll see we now have our deployment share there all right now what we're going to do is we're going to click then right click on media 001 click properties i'm going to uncheck the x86 boot image i'm going to name this media underscore domain dot iso so replace light touch media there i'm going to go to rules and this is a little bit different than the ones that the rules that we had in our deployment share in that I removed the deploy root which was of course network centric okay so copy that because our deploy root is now on, going to be on our I'm sorry we'll remove this this is our bootstrap INI so click edit bootstrap INI replace that you'll notice skip BDD welcome it has our user ID, our password, and our domain. Okay, click Save. The only thing missing here is Deploy Root. 
and like I said, our CD or our USB thumb drive will be our deploy route from now on. Okay. Now for our rules here, we're going to go from settings, line 62, all the way down to line 147. Copy and paste that there, control V, and I'll show you the difference here. So I removed the bit locker encryption portions of this. And the reason why is when you do encryption for bit locker, it can't have a um, USB or CD, DVD media present when it does that. So you'll have to do that manually after your installation. But that's just the cost of using a um, offline media. So you're you'll, you're good there. Doesn't take long, and I'll show you how we'll do that. Okay. So I just changed the uh, name to MDT Lab Media Dash Domain. Okay. Uh, down here, you'll want to change your time zone. So I've given you the command here in a comment, so you can just check your machine by saying tzutil dash forward slash g and it will tell you what your time zone is replace that here we have our wss server okay we have our logs our event service so we can still monitor as long as it's on the domain um monitoring will show up for your offline media okay and that's a good thing just in case you want to see if something went wrong. Okay. So I did say skip BitLocker, BDE install suppress equals yes. And that's the only change. So we'll go to our Windows PE tab. I'm going to go to Platform X64. I'm going to change our scratch space size down to 512. I'm going to go to the Features tab right here, just so you're aware. DISM Commandlets. .NET Framework, and I like to put Windows PowerShell as well. Okay, Under our Drivers and Patches, we're going to go on our Selection Profile, and our WinPE is still going to be there. Include all drivers from the Selection Profile, Apply, and OK. All right. And now what we're going to do, we're going to update our media to create our ISO. So right-click on Media 001, Update Media Content, and away we go. You'll see it starts copying the files, folders, operating systems, WIMS, everything. And I'll be back when that's ready. Okay, and we're back. All right, we just did our update. We'll click Finish. There we are. And now what we're going to do is we're going to right-click on MDT01, go to Settings, right here, just so you're aware. Options, Shared Folders, click Always Enabled, Map as a Network Drive, Add, Next, browse. What we're going to do is we're going to go to our desktop or wherever you have your MDT lab. Click OK. Next, finish, and OK. All right. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go to our file explorer. We're going to go to G, media, media domain. We're going to right click and copy. And then we'll go down to our share. Right here, MDT Lab, and right click and paste that. Okay. And give that a few moments. We can close the Explorer window while that's doing that. Okay, we're going to go to our G drive. So let's go here, right click, new folder. We're going to call this Rufus. All right. And then we're going to open up Edge while that's copying, all right? We're gonna go to rufus.ie forward slash en forward slash, okay? And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go down here to the newest uh, downloads. You'll see 4.5p portable Windows X64. We want the newest portable version. We'll click on that. Save as. We're going to go to our G drive, where we just created that Rufus folder, and save there. Give that a moment. And close. We'll go into Rufus. Okay. 
our ISO just uh, has finished copying to our MDT lab folder. Okay, we're going to double click Rufus. Okay, there we go. Do you want to allow Rufus to check for applications updates online? I'm going to click yes. Okay, we're going to plug in a USB to on our host machine. Okay, just like so. And it's going to ask us what we want to do. I'm going to say connect to a virtual machine, MDT01, click OK. Okay, and that should show up here. There it is, USB drive H. Okay, and what we can do is in Rufus now, it'll show our H drive, disk or ISO. So we're going to select, we're going to go to where we have our ISO file, which is in G media, media domain, ISO, open, okay, just like that. I'm going to change the volume label to media underscore domain, and then I'll click start and let that go. Now to save time, I'm going to use the ISO that I placed in this folder, but once that's done, you can then close this, just like so. You can right click on MDT01. Go to removable devices, send, uh, you know, whichever USB you have connected, click disconnect, which will connect it to the host. And then you can, of course, safely remove it by clicking and eject that from the host. All right. And we're good to go there. So let's create a new VM, new virtual machine. This will be a Windows 11. So next next we'll go here to windows 11 x 64 next we'll call this workstation 003 ws003 next we're going to grab our password for our tpm module there we go twice control v next select secure boot next we're going to do one processor two cores next Leave the default of four gigs of RAM. Next, next, next. MVME recommended. Create a new virtual disk. 64 gigs is the minimum. Store virtual disk as a single file. Next, next. I'm going to click on customize hardware. I'm going to go here to new DVD CD. Use ISO image. Browse. I'm going to go to our MDT lab and our media underscore domain ISO that we just placed there. I'm gonna to go to our network adapter, go to LAN segment, choose our MDT lab. Under USB controller, I'm gonna uncheck share Bluetooth devices. Okay, then I'm gonna go down to display and I'm just gonna uncheck the automatically adjust user interface size. Click close and finish. Okay, then I'm gonna move that up to here with those and we'll power on that virtual machine we'll click in the window press spacebar when it comes up we can press control and alt and then close this pop up here and we'll wait for our deployment to come up and it's using our iso instead of our pixie boot okay just make sure everything is good go and you'll notice that this will be a lot faster and I'll show you in MDT 01 if you go to monitoring refresh you can see it's already running and it's showing it in our status okay we'll give it a name of course first and then it'll come up here but you'll notice these are about an hour this should be about 38 to 40 minutes it saves a good good amount of time when you do it locally from the from the uh, disk, okay. So I'm going to choose Windows 11 Enterprise for the second one. Click Next. Give that a moment. We're going to call that Workstation 003. As I said, we'll choose 7-Zip and Notepad++. And Next. And away we go. And you can see it's going pretty quickly it'll start doing the formatting it'll install the operating system
let's go back over here. I'm going to right click, click refresh, and now you can see it says workstation 003, copy scripts, and if you go to our domain controller and you go to DHCP down here, scope, address leases, you can see it's already showing up here. And once it's done, this will, of course, show up as uh, WS003. Also, once it is done, it will join the domain into our client's directory, our OU here. It'll be another Windows uh, 11 Enterprise. We can change client. And, of course, once it starts installing its updates, you'll see it in Windows Server Update Services. It'll show up here and grab its updates. All right. So as you can see, it's installing the operating system. And that's pretty much how offline media works. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, let me know. And I'll see you in the next video.